White Rose and Jacob Blue 17. Alright, we're going to do the honorable mentions for, well, 90s cartoons. And the first one on our list is my favorite one, Godzilla the series. You know, Godzilla the series was the only first type thing I ever watched about Godzilla. But the thing was, I loved about the part with Zilla Jr. and Nick Steen said his father and son. And as for the rest of the characters, they're all pretty cool. That's my thoughts on it. And yours, honey? Well, I was basically, I basically watched the movie, I was unaware of the animated series until years later. It's basically what got me into Godzilla, in the movie I mean. That's true for most people, I do believe. As for me, I didn't watch this until I was like about... 23 years old, because I didn't know about its existence, but then again, that was because there was some sort that got me interested. Besides, Digimon, Digital Monsters, Digimon Gollum, catch him. <laughs> In any case, this is an honorable mention of this, and I love Godzilla the series. It ruled. You know, I wish they would make a sequel of this, you know, because... They Zilla... did have a sequel plan. I meant, with the I, meant a, I meant a sequel to this TV show. We never know what happened to the aliens in the end. Mm. Actually, they retreated. If you watch an old series like I did. Yeah, but what about the guy? You know the guy that escaped through the pod to the alien world? Hmm. The doctor. I'm not sure. He was in the, he was in the submarine, the alien submarine, at the bottom of some two other scientists. Dr. Craven, I... Mabled, and... Dr. Craven, um, seen him as a hero. I think that fellow ended up getting controlled by the aliens. No, 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 no. Two of those guys did get controlled by the aliens, but not him. Hmm. Believe me, he was just, he just went to the, you know, dimensional door into a different dimension. That would happen to him. If you look an episode, let's see on my list. Na, 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 na. Oh, here we are. Love very young. Yeah. Team called to help and rescue Zinta Biology by Alexander Polin. Oh, yes. Alexander Polon. Oh, no, it's Dr. Polon. He disappeared and went to a door to the alien's realm. And he was never shown up ever again. Only mentioned when those two showed up, taking over. By the Leviathan's evil aliens. Honestly, supreme villain, supreme here, villain or not. Ugh. All right, next honorable mention we're going to talk about is <laughs> X Men, as in the um, the nineties X Men. Nineties. Yes, the nineties. Yes. Now, as for that series, to tell you the truth, uh, I'm okay, you know, not the TV show. What? I know, I know, I'm just, I, 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 honey, honey, I'm just using this to help me find it, okay? Yeah. Honestly, honey. Sorry, honey. Any case, oh yeah, the thing was, the first thing that got me into it was not the cartoon that was made back in the 90s. It was the, it was, uh, it was X-Men Evolution that got me into it. But then, after watching yeah. X-Men, after watching X-Men Evolution, I found the animated series, and it was awesome. So many characters, so many heuristics, and my favorite one, of course, Beast. And I love Professor Xavier and Wolverine. <laughs> Anchor issues, man. Go on, honey. Sorry about that earlier. Yeah. It basically took me years to get all five seasons on DVD, even though I did get them in volumes. Mm. All I can say it is... Said, go, go ahead. It just said that... She yeah, didn't make any appearances in the 90s show. Yeah, true. Mm. I love the romance plot 
between Jean and Makorska. And I love the fact that we see um, Rogue in a superhero blind. I didn't know that she took the power from Miss Marvel. I didn't know there was a Miss Marvel. But then again, DC has a Mr. Marvel, so they have a Miss Marvel. Captain Marvel. Captain Linda, Marvel. You're right, you're right, honey. Character Carol Danvers would end up taking on the mat. Who has since become one of Marvel's most popular characters? Also in the future episodes, we see that we see that Scott and Jean have a relative, has a descendant, a great great grandson. The guy with the white hair and nose, black eye yeah. above his eyes. Yes. Him. He is a descendant of a family. I researched about him. And well, I mean, there's a lot more depth into him, more than meets the eye. Or more than meets the yeah. sky. <laughs> but also, my favorite episode is when Beast helps a blind woman and they fall in love with each other. So and beautiful. Craven Creed is Sabertooth's son. Oh! Craven Creed is a creep. <sighs> And That's later we find out that his mother was Mystique. Ouchie Baba. It's gotta hurt. I mean, you don't want your mother Mother's Day being that, would you? Hmm. Uh, and it's just too bad that Colossus only appeared for a few episodes. He's one of my favorite X-Men. My favorite will always be Professor Xavier, Rogue, and of course, Jean and Scott, Wolverine. As for yep. Beast, Beast is awesome. He's super, super awesomely smart. He's one of my favorite intelligent characters. He's like the Beast from Being a Beast. Mm -hmm. Ironically, intelligent and good for being. Next to our next honorable mention will be the Wild Thombies. And that's a classic because... Tim Curry was the voice of Nigel Thornberry. My dad used to have to do an impression on him a lot when I was a kid, actually. <laughs> he would always be like, I'm not a Joe Thornberry. In my hands, I would be all animals. Yeah, but my dad did it better, though. Okay. Yep. The show is about Eliza Thornberry, part of an average family. Got a dad, mom, and sister. There's Donnie. We found him and all that. But he, she has the powers to talk to animals. Which was a lovely thing to do. And plus Darwin, which name of a famous professor at Animal Ecology, is go on adventures. Your thoughts, honey? This is basically one of Nickelodeon's classics. Okay. Done by the same people. I did Rugrats and Ario Monster. The thing about Eliza's ability to talk to animals, she has to keep it a secret. The voice we we'll lose it. And sure in the Wild Thornberry's movie. That is true. That is true. And as they did in the movie, luckily she was able to tell her sister about her powers. And if her sister told her, she would be turned to a warhog. Or bamboo. Uh, monkey, or actually. Baboo. Oh, yeah. Baboon, monkey. What's the difference? A baboon is actually a type of monkey. I know. As any case, my favorite special is when they reveal who Donnie's parents were. It was like a Tarzan story. It had a smelly like yucky. Raised by orangutans. Mm hmm. Orangutans. The orange monkey of the world. An ape, actually. Ape. I know, honey. Just doing a joke, honey. Any case, that's our thoughts on the show. Next show to be honorable mention is The Queen the Act. Which I adore. Disney's classics. Oh, it's been on yeah. with DuckTales. The reason why sure, I like... Sure, we've watched different light. Mm -hmm. The reason why I like DuckTales is because A, father and daughter bonded. Duck... Dolph Wing reminds me a lot of my father. Being in the attic, but also a good father. I didn't get DuckTales when you started... I know, honey. I get things mixed up, honey. I'm sorry. Okay. Duck Wing, yeah. Duck. Sorry. My apologies. My father and I had a my father and I had this kind of bond when we were growing up. He was the one who always made sure to keep my sister safe, and I was the one always like Goslin, <laughs> causing trouble, mischief, like anyone would. Dot Wing Duck was a good father, but also a loony hero with art with he was arrogant, foolish, idiot. But he's a hero nonetheless. And he had a lunch pad, a lovable careable psychic with them. Your thoughts, honey? 
spawn. They showed that. Oh, they showed a different. Definitely showed a oh, launch pattern in different line. Well, it's a main dish. Also, iconic was the villain. Like Mega Duck, mm -hmm. Bushroot, Liquidator, yep. Mega Volt, and Quacker Jack. Oh, yeah. And there was the fact that her boy, that her, his, his girlfriend was a villain in this. Kind of reminds me of Catwoman with Batman. But again, it sort of is like that. Oh, Morgana is named after the famous um, witch from King Arthur's mythos. Known fact, actually, it's known that Morgana, the one character designed to be after her, has the same type of outfit motif as Morgana from King Arthur's legend. And even one time in Doc, and even one time during DuckTales, Scrooge McDuck tried to do the same thing like DuckTales, like Duck, um, not Wing Duck, called the Masked Mallard. He was wearing a purple uniform, cap name, the Masked Mallard became an epilogue often used news show referring to Doc Wing Duck himself. Mm. Which is a known fact. My favorite episode is when um, Darkwing went to another dimension and found a nice Gosling and the Evil Four. Well, you know what I mean. Yeah. Being and good. And Gosling just... And Gosling being like a miss, nice, nice, nice girl. Still a good person, but too nice. Oof. Even for me. Our next show that I wanted to be mentioned, honorable mention, Reboot, which I love this program. It was the first um, sort of introduced me to CGI. Then there was Beast Wars and all of that. We talked about that last time already. In any case, I love the show. My favorite character, Bob, Bung, Dot, Enzo, and, first, and of course, Andrea. And also, my favorite is villain and voice the most nastiest creature of them all, Tony J and Megabyte in Hexadecimal. Your thoughts, love? Oh, well, this too introduced me to. This is also what introduced me to CGI. That's true. It wasn't until years later that I. I don't know how long the show went for. And what happened? to all the characters, as well as find out more about Megabyte, than, as well as learn that he and X were siblings. That's true. My favorite villain in the story, though, Mega Megabyte was, of course, scared me as a little kid. But Hex Decimal, oh my god, she could be so eerily crazy. Go, 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 go. Go on, honey. Yeah, and the thing I liked about Megabytes is he was voiced by Tony J. As I said earlier, one of the most villainous voices ever. I mean, come on. He sounds a little like Sheriff Connor Ferrolo put together. Indeed. And he's on Watch Mojo stuff. And list of villains of the 90s. But as for Hexadecimal, I'm glad that she sometimes turned good. Some, I'm glad she turned good later in the later series. It's too bad she had to sacrifice herself just to help Bob and the rest. Yes, and it's too bad we didn't get this. In Megabyte have a long. We didn't get to see what happened after Megabyte took over. Um, mainframe. Later on, it was found out that they made a reboot of the show. Too bad it was a copyrighted Paula. It was a copyrighted between Code Lyoko and Power Rangers. Mm. That what most of my friends said. And I agree with them. It didn't. It wasn't like them anymore. And Megabyte, the new form of Megabyte, wasn't that scary anymore. It was a sequel. I know, I know, but still. It just wasn't very good sequel. 
The only points I like about it is when Hexadecimo is back in it and Bob and the rest. But too bad growing up Enzo isn't in there. Not even Andrea or even young Andrea in there. Oh, they're very long. Listen. For episode, we'll explain what happened. And that could make a bike to go for. You know, maybe some flashbacks and all that. I hope they do that for second season, honey. You mean. We'll probably be seeing more of Bob and the Evers. Let's hope so, love. Let's hope so. In any case, folks, this was our uh, this was our unmissables. Next time we'll be doing two thousand top two thousand shows of the two thousands. So, I'll say it as always. Goodbye and farewell. See you next time, honey. Last words. Adios. Good. And goodbye, everybody. Okay, my brony watchers. Remember to subscribe to my channel, and remember. There's always more with me than meets the eye. Or, should I say, more than meets a white rose. Night, folks. <laughs>